During the last year, I have captured the FWC and their contractors committing what I believe to be dozens of crimes against nature. And today, I'm going to share them with you. This is a copy of Florida's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Rules and Laws. These are the laws that the FWC created. On page 137 in chapter 379, it states, a person may not throw or place or cause to be thrown or placed any dynamite, lidite, gunpowder, cannon cracker, acids, filtration discharge, debris from mines, Indian berries, sawdust, green walnuts, walnut leaves, creosote, oil or other explosives or deleterious substances or force into the fresh waters of this state whereby fish therein are or may be injured. The key word in this statement is deleterious. The law defines it as any physical, chemical, or biological materials in concentrations or amounts that impair or could impair the existing or designated uses of reservation surface waters. It is pretty clear to me that chemical herbicides are a deleterious substance and spraying them into our waters, I believe, violates this law. On page 193 of the law book, it states, any person who dumps litter in violation of subsection 4 in the amount exceeding 500 pounds of weight or 100 cubic feet in volume or any quantity for commercial purposes or dumps litter which is a hazardous waste as defined in 403.703 is guilty of a felony on the third degree. Again, I don't think anyone can argue that a chemical herbicide is a hazardous waste. On page 300 of this law book, under section 68A, we read that the use of gasoline or any other chemical or gaseous substance to drive wildlife from their retreats is prohibited. On Lake Kissimmee, I documented several instances where FWC contractors sprayed bird nests, forcing them from their retreats. Let's talk about the Federal Endangered Species Act. This law requires federal agencies in consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and or NOAA Fisheries Service to ensure that actions that they authorize, fund, or carry out are not likely to jeopardize the continued existence of any listed species or result in the destruction or adverse modification of designated critical habitat of such species. So it's against the law to destroy or modify critical habitat of endangered species. On Lake Kissimmee, I showed you a snail kite hunting over acres of dead vegetation that had recently been sprayed on Bird Island. This was done right in the middle of nesting season, just hundreds of feet from active snail kite nest. I also showed you helicopters dropping thousands of gallons of poisons on snail kites on Lake Okeechobee. This was an area called King's Bar, and it is a prime nesting area for the endangered snail kite. Next, I took you to Lake Rosalie and showed you an endangered wood stork wading around in shallow water that was recently sprayed with herbicides. What a heartbreaking image as it walks around wondering what happened to its critical habitat. Actually, all wild birds are protected by state and federal laws. We documented duck boxes being sprayed with baby ducks inside. We saw numerous coots being sprayed. One day in North Cove of Lake Kissimmee, we captured nine different birds being doused with diquat, which is a contact poison. This video created an avalanche of bad press for the FWC, so they released a statement that said, the herbicide used was not diquat. It was a Priscilacor flumioxacin combination. But the schedule of operations that the FWC released a week before listed diquat, Priscilacor, and flumioxacin as the chemicals to be used. So the FWC either put out false information in the schedule or they used diquat and are now lying about it. So which is it, FWC? Let's take a look at the other two chemicals, Priscilacor and flumioxacin. Both come from C-Pro Chemicals. So I got on their website, clicked on the labels, scrolled down to Priscilacor, click on that, 
This brings you to the labels. On page four, you will find a paragraph that states, do not mix any pesticide product with this product without first referring to the following website for specific product, 3206tankmix.com. So let's go take a look at that website. It says, all pesticide products can be tank mixed with Priscillacore aquatic herbicide, except those containing the active ingredients listed in this document. So click on that. That brings you to here. The first table you see is aquatic uses. And as you can see, flumioxazine is not on the list. But let's scroll down and take a look at the non-aquatic use products. We scroll down and sure enough, to my surprise, flumioxazine is listed as one of the non-aquatic herbicides that are not supposed to be mixed with Priscillacor. So I called Cpro Chemicals on December 19th and they told me that they didn't know why flumoxacin was listed as a non-aquatic herbicide on their own website, but the reason it was still on the list is that CPRO just sent the EPA three months ago their own documents showing that the two herbicides are safe when mixed together, and they haven't had a chance to remove it from the list. So I guess the EPA just relies on chemical companies to tell them that their own chemicals are safe to mix, Someone please tell me that this is not how it works. One more problem with this whole thing. The North Coast video was shot in August, and that is four months ago. So did the FWC mix these chemicals before the EPA even knew that they were safe? I guess we will never know. The next time I saw them spraying for silicone was on Lake Rosalie. There were four airboats on this tiny lake. The EPA is so concerned about drift from this product, the label warns that it is not supposed to come in contact with carrots, soybeans, grapes, tobacco, vegetable crops, flowers, ornamental trees and shrubs, or other desirable broadleaf plants, as serious injury may occur. So I was shocked to see an applicator turn around and spray this poison behind the airboat and allow the prop wash to blast this chemical all over the native plants. Does this look like another violation to you? This is a gallon of Dyquat that I bought from a local store. The label says, do not apply to muddy water. Avoid stirring sediment during application. And do not apply to plants that are covered with mud deposits. And the next sentence states, it is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. This warning is on every herbicide label. The reason Diquat is not allowed to be mixed with muddy water is that Diquat's positive charge binds with the negative charges of muck and rotting vegetation. Once they bond together, they never break down. All the lakes in Florida are a muddy mess and Diquat is one of the most popular herbicides that they use. I showed you numerous times this year when they were using Diquat and the airboats were churning up the muddy water. The most disturbing image I showed you this year was the airboat that was pumping muddy lake water into the tank and mixing it with Diquat. Then they sprayed rotting vegetation over and over again. This brings me to the next violation. On the North Coast schedule of operations, the FWC posted that Diquat was to be applied at two quarts per acre, and that is based on one application. When we saw them spraying the same area over and over again, plus, Lord only knows how many times it was sprayed before because it was already all dead, we have no choice but to assume that they went way over the two quarts per acre limit. This is incredibly dangerous for the wildlife in this area. The next violation we witness is spraying in winds over 10 miles per hour. This warning is found on all herbicide labels and even in their textbook. We have caught them on many days spraying in 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Just watch this spray get hammered by the wind. It was every bit of 20 mile per hour this day. Just watch this umbrella. I thought it was gonna blow off of his boat.
Some of the most disturbing footage that we got this year was the helicopter footage when they sprayed King's Bar on Lake Okeechobee. This was a herbicide called ClearCast, and this is its label. We are going to go to page 6 and look at the application height. It says applications must not be made at a height greater than 10 feet above the top of the largest plants unless a greater height is required for aircraft safety. Before I show you the helicopter, I want to show you how crop dusters spray cornfields. This is a plane that has power lines, barns, silos, and even had a water tower to navigate, and it still managed to get down to 10 feet above the plants. Now let's take a look at the helicopter on Lake Okeechobee. I estimated its altitude anywhere from 50 to 60 feet above the plants. That is five to six times the maximum height that the label requires. There isn't any power lines or any other structures out here. It is just a wide open lake. The next violation that we witnessed this year has to do with how the airboats clean their tanks out at the end of the day. Most of the chemical labels have similar guidelines, but let's take a look at Diquats. It says open dumping is prohibited. Pesticide wastes are toxic. Improper disposal of excess pesticide spray mixture or rinsate is a violation of federal law. If these wastes cannot be disposed of by use according to the label instructions, contact your state pesticide or environmental control agency or the hazardous waste representative at the nearest EPA regional office for guidance. I want to show you how the spray boats cleaned out their tanks in the north cove of Lake Kissimmee. They emptied the tank by hosing down their engines and boat with the spray nozzle. This is not an isolated incident. We talked to ex-spray guys and they told us that this was a standard everyday procedure. Since Diquat was listed as the herbicide, let's go back to the label and see what it says about this. Page 3 under the firefighting measures says this product may form flammable and explosive hydrogen gas when in contact with aluminum. Are you kidding me? The entire boat is made out of aluminum. People, you can't make this stuff up. I have one more thing to share with you and I gotta tell you, I saved the best for last. It has nothing to do with spraying and everything to do with how the FWC conducts its business. The FWC operates under constitutional rulemaking authority over marine life, which means they answer to no one, not even the legislature or the governor. There is a lawsuit pending right now that alleges that the FWC got this authority illegally, and if the FWC loses this case, all the laws that they ever created could be overturned. Unbelievable. It is time for Floridians to teach the FWC that they work for us and we are demanding that they stop the poisoning of our wildlife and our drinking water.